Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Adam here, and today I'm gonna be showing you how I go about adding outlets using a light switch that's already in place, getting the power from the light switch in order to send power then to the outlet down below. And again, I've got my mock-up wall here, which is not just going to be a dead wall. I do have live electricity flowing into this just like your house would be. Some of the stuff that I've seen done are just done completely wrong in order to make something like this happen. So when I get to those steps, I'll show you some examples of what I've seen in the past and some better ways or correct ways of actually doing it. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's go. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is shut off the power to the circuit breaker that's supplying the power to this particular light switch. Then once that circuit breaker's off, then I'm gonna take the cover plate off and then test it to make sure that the power is in fact off. Now, one of the big reasons why I wanted to make sure that the power is off going to this light switch box, obviously when you go to work on wiring, you wanna make sure that the power's off, but I'm not actually gonna be working on the wiring real soon. Uh, at some point, I'm actually gonna have to turn the power on in the middle of this installation, but the next step that I wanna take is actually putting a hole in the wall down below where my outlet box is going to go. Now, most homeowners are not going to know where their wiring is coming from that's feeding their light switch box, whether it's coming from up above the switch box or it's coming from down below the switch box. So just to be safe, you wanna make sure that the power's off so that when I go to cut my hole in, if I accidentally cut into the wiring that may be coming from down below, I don't get shocked. And of course, knowing that, I'm going to do my best, of course, to make sure that that wouldn't happen because if you were to damage the wiring that's in the wall, then you're probably gonna have to run a whole new wire into this switch box and that's not a whole lot of fun. All right, so since the power is confirmed off, now I can go ahead and cut my hole for my outlet. So I need to kind of decide where on the wall I want it to be. Obviously an outlet is probably gonna be a little bit further away from the light switch than this, but with this being a mock wall, I've only got so much to work with. So what I would do is I would take my stud finder and I would wanna find the stud because we know that there's gonna be a stud on one side of this box or the other, and we wanna figure out where that's at. So I wanna kinda of line up my outlet with where this box is. So find that stud again, and there it is. So now I'm gonna go ahead and mark it, and that's gonna be the edge of the stud. So now I'm gonna take my old work box I'm gonna be installing, and I'm just gonna put it up here on the wall with the right side of it lined up with the mark that I made for where the edge of the stud is. Now this box doesn't have to be right on the stud, it can actually be moved in a little bit. That way I know I've got plenty of room for the installation. So I'm just gonna go ahead and line up the right side of this box with that mark. And then once I've got it lined up and placed where I want it to, I'll just trace out my lines all the way around the box. All right, so now that I've got my box all traced out, now I will take a drywall saw and cut the whole thing out. Now while I'm doing this, of course, again, I wanna make sure that I'm not going too deep with the blade just in case there's something in behind this wall, whether it's electrical wire or maybe even there's a PVC pipe back there. Just wanna make sure that I'm only inserting a blade as much as necessary in order to cut my hole. Now what I'll do with the power still off is I will remove my light switch from the box. Next, I'll take some chain that I like to use in order to fish wires and walls, and I'm just gonna drop it down from the top box down to my bottom hole. Now that I've got the chain down to the hole, now I'm gonna take my wiring and I'm gonna tape it to that chain using some electrical tape. And I like to overlap the chain onto the wire a good amount and then also use a lot of electrical tape just to make sure that, that chain and wire are not gonna become disconnected in the wall. Once that's all taped up, I'll just pull the chain up and feed the new wiring into the old light switch box. Now I wanna make sure that I have plenty of wiring going into each of the boxes but I wanna have more than enough to where it measures at least six inches from where the wiring enters into that new box out past the front of the new box. And the same, of course, goes for my old light switch box as well. All right, so now that that's cut to length, now I can run it into my new box. Now that I've got the wiring run into the new box, now I can go ahead and tighten the box into the wall. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and just get started with wiring up my new outlet. And this is all pretty self-explanatory. We've got our bare ground wire, our white neutral wire, and then of course our black hot wire. So I like to start by just stripping all the wires before I get started with hooking it up. Now on this outlet, we're gonna have a green ground screw, this silver colored neutral screw, which is where the white wire goes. And then on this other side, these gold colored screws, of course this is where the hot wires go. 
and I like to use my wire strippers in order to make these loops. There's these holes on pretty much all wire strippers where you can just insert it in slightly and then twist it around and for the most part it'll make a perfect loop. All right, so now that my wiring is all ready, now I'm just gonna take my outlet, and the first one I'm gonna start with is the green ground screw. So I'm gonna take that bare copper wire, I'm gonna run it around the green ground screw in a clockwise direction, and then just tighten it down. So then I'm just gonna take my white wire, wrap it around in the same way, and then tighten it down. And then last but not least, I wrap the black hot wire around the gold colored terminal screw, and then tighten it down. Now one thing to note, I've already removed the ears off of this outlet here, but they're all going to come with these ears around it, and the reason I removed it from this is with these old work boxes, the ears for these are not necessary at all. The ears are for, for new work boxes to go up against the drywall, but since the old work box is already up against the drywall, if you left the ears on, this would protrude past this box. When you go to put your cover plate on, it won't sit flush. And now this outlet is completely wired up and it can be installed into the new box. All right, so now moving up here to the light switch box, I've got all my new wiring already stripped and run out of the box. And this is where I'm gonna to need to turn the power back on. All right, so now that I've got my power back on, now I need to figure out which one of these is my line wire. So start with this top one. I'm not getting any signal. Go to the bottom one and it's saying that this one has power. So we'll try it again, nothing up here. So my voltage detector is telling me that this lower wire is my line wire. So now I'm going to go ahead and shut the power back off. All right, so now that I know that this is my line and this is my load, all of my wires can stay connected to this light switch except for my line wire because I'm going to need that to supply power not only to this light switch but then also to the outlet. So now that that's done, really quick intermission here. If you're finding this video to be helpful or you're just liking the content of this type of video, please do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button that's right down below. It really does help the video out to spread out to more people and hopefully be able to help them out as well. I really appreciate it. Let's get back into it. All right, so now of course I've got my line wire down here that's supplying the power. I still have everything for the most part other than the line wire connected to my light switch. The ground wire is a pigtail coming out of this wire nut here. And then of course the load wire that goes to the light bulb is still connected to the light switch. And then of course I've got my new wires here that are gonna be supplying the power to the new outlet. But first, before I wire all of this up, let me just show you what I've seen way more times than I should have, what people do in order to do this installation or to daisy chain light switches together, whatever it may be. So they've got their line wire. It's going around the terminal screw on the light switch. Then they'll take their new wire and they will then stack this loop on top of the loop that's already on where that hot wire is at and then tighten it down like this. You can see I've now got two loops or two wires underneath of this one terminal screw supplying the power to the switch and then also supplying power then down to the new outlet. Now will this work? I mean yeah temporarily anyways it's going to supply power to both of those things as they are intending for it to do. The problem is this is going to have a high probability of failing in the future and one of these wires coming loose and having a loose wire in the box. This is just the completely wrong way of doing it and I've seen it happen way too many times when I've gone to do renovations on previous properties that I've had. Now something else that I've seen people do instead of stacking two on this terminal and I've actually seen plenty of electricians do it as well and I don't agree with it is you see this hole back here on the back they'll take the line wire and shove it into that hole, and this is a push-in. So when you push that wire into that hole, it's gonna hold it in place to where it's not supposed to be able to be pulled out. And I actually hate these things because they are known to fail, and you'll have a wire just pull out of it. So I don't like using the push-ins at all, so the proper way to do this, in my opinion, is to use pigtails. All right, so now I'm back to where I was to begin with, my line wire down here at the bottom my new wiring going to my outlet up here, and then of course I've still got everything connected to the light switch that was connected before other than the line wire. So I'm gonna move this light switch out of the way so you can see better. All right, so as always, I'm gonna start with my ground wires here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the wire nut off of my ground wires. Then I'll take my new ground wire that's going to the new outlet and combine it with all of the ground wires that were already in the box. Once those are all twisted together really well, I'll just trim the top off of it and then put a wire nut in on top and tighten it down. 
Now that those are all together, I can push them into the back of the box. All right, so the next wire to focus on is this white neutral wire. Now, when you're in a light switch box, generally, you're gonna find all of your neutral wires all connected together, tucked in the very back of the box. Unless you have a smart switch or something like that, they're not gonna be connected to the light switch themselves. On these single pole switches, there's nowhere for the neutral wire to go. So this part is actually really easy to do. I'll just remove the wire nut from my neutrals. Then I take my new neutral and just put it together with the two that were under the wire nut. And I'll just get it started to pre-twist a little bit with those other two wires. Now that I've got it twisting with those other two wires, then I just take the wire nut, put it in on top, and tighten it down as well. And now the neutrals can all go to the back of the box as well. All right, so now all that's left is my black wire going to the electrical outlet box, and then my line wire that's supplying all the power. And I still need to connect power then also to this switch here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the loop off of my hot wire just because I don't like the way it looks. I'm gonna restrip it. Then I'm gonna take my new wire that's going to the outlet and my line wire, put them up next to each other. Then I'll take the lone pigtail that I made that's gonna connect then to the switch, take the other end and combine it with those two black wires. And then put a wire nut in on top of those. And then that wire nut with the black wires can be pushed into the back of the box also. And then I'll take the loop from that lone pigtail that I made and wrap it around this lower terminal screw. Now on a single pull switch like this, it does not matter which terminal screw the line or low go onto. Once the switch gets flipped, that's when it connects. And now the light switch can be connected to the box. All right, so now the power's back on. I'm gonna start out by testing my outlet down here. I'm gonna do that by using an outlet tester. If everything's hooked up correctly, these two lights on the right will light up. So that one's good. And that one's good. So we've gotten past the first hurdle. The outlet works exactly like it should. Now we just need to test this light switch to make sure that it still can supply power to this light bulb up above. So we'll go ahead and flip the switch and it's working as well. So we were successful in adding this outlet using this light switch as the power source. And as you saw, it was a pretty easy project to do. Now, speaking of projects, I've done a whole lot of other electrical projects in the past. I'll have some links right over here that you can click on to check those out as well. And one of them will be the video I talked about earlier that shows some of the techniques that I've found to be useful in fishing wire up and down walls. Now, I hope that you found this video to be interesting and helpful. And if you did, please let me know by giving the video a thumbs up. And of course, if you have any questions or comments at all, you can leave those down in the comment section down below. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.